Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. GNOME 3.34 has been released today and it packs a lot of improvements from the GNOME shell to the settings to the various applications that it ships with. Most things have been touched up and I think it's time we take a look at all the improvements it brings. Speaking of improvement, how do you feel about self-improvement? Uh, there is something that we wish we could do and that we can't do right now, like playing guitar, like running a business, like writing better stories. Well, to start picking up new skills, there's something online called Skillshare. Uh, Skillshare is an online learning platform with already more than 27,000 courses on a wide variety of subjects. Anything that you can think of, there's something on Skillshare. And there's already more than 4 million people using it every day. And now you can join them as well. Just by clicking on the link in the description below, you'll get a 2-month free trial and after that, if you decide you like it and you want to keep learning stuff, well, you can for less than a Netflix subscription each month. Some of you might already know that I write science fiction novels. And they're not published yet, and the reason they are not is because I felt that my characters were lacking, they were not believable. Turns out writing characters is probably the hardest part of writing a story. And so I used this great course called Writing Believable Characters by Saba Tahir, which is a New York best-selling author. And it's really helped me putting the focus on the characters themselves and their motivations, the way they speak, the way their past experience have forged their mentality, their personality. And I feel that this course has finally lifted the block I had where I felt it wasn't good enough to be submitted to be published. But that's just me. And I think that if you browse Skillshare, you'll find that there is something that you wanted to learn all along and that you will learn easily using Skillshare. So head over to the description, click on the link and redeem your two month free trial I can guarantee you will not regret it. And now back to the video. The desktop. There have been a few improvements to GNOME Shell. First, GNOME 3.34 continues the latest tendency to optimize speed and performance. It will be subjective and depend on your machine, but on mine, running Fedora Rawhide with the latest GNOME, I can say it's definitely smoother. Animations feel more responsive, and the Activities Overview does appear faster than on the same machine on Manjaro GNOME running 3.32. The most user-facing feature, though, is the ability to reorganize apps into folders by simple drag and drop in the Applications Overview. It works just like on your smartphone, drag and drop on top of another to create a folder. The folder has an automatic name based on shared categories between apps. This is a much needed improvement and should make using the app grid a lot easier for people allergic to keyboards. In the activities overlay when showing all windows, the highlight over a specific window also has been tweaked and the shell's appearance has been tweaked a bit with a darker background to make everything more legible. To conclude, some more apps have migrated to the new GNOME icon guidelines, namely photos, videos, to-do and simple scan, whose user-facing name is now document scanner. The settings. The settings have been touched up a bit as well, with a brand new wallpaper panel. It now allows you to select an image outside of the pictures folder to be used as your wallpaper, and makes viewing all available wallpapers a lot easier. While those are good improvements, I also can't help but think that they should have been added a long time ago. In the display settings, Nightlight now has its own tab, which is a good change, making things better organized. Finally, GNOME Shell search providers can also be reordered in the dedicated settings panel. Applications. GNOME apps are, in my opinion, very clear and legible, but also a bit too simple, and in 3.34 they have seen a bunch of improvements. First, Nautilus, the file manager, will now show a warning dialog when a user tries to paste something in a read-only folder. This change makes it a lot more comprehensible to users. GNOME Web, also called Epiphany, now supports pinning tabs for keeping a few web apps open at all times and ships with a new emoji picker. Pressing Alt plus Enter when typing a URL will open it in a new tab. When dragging and dropping tabs between windows, if a window has no tabs left, it will now close automatically. The new tab page also have been redesigned and sandboxing has been improved. Epiphany's ad blocker also has been improved and is now based on WebKit's content extensions. Gnome Web is now a great and capable web browser that I use more and more each day. It's also the default on Elementor OS which should benefit from these improvements as well. Gnome Maps will now restore the last open position once you reopen it, as well as the map type you selected, Aerial or Street, which is nice, and it also uses a newer tile style. It also is now able to open URLs directly in the app and will now search as you type and autocomplete in the search field. 
Gnome Boxes has seen a bunch of improvements as well, including an improved virtual machine creation workflow and the ability to boot from an ISO in an existing virtual machine. You can also enable 3D acceleration or not as an optional setting. Gnome Music now watches for changes in the folders where its music are located, which is a must-have feature for most people, and now supports gapless playback. The album, artist and playlist views also have been revamped a bit. To be honest, music is still behind Rhythmbox or other music players like Lollipop, but it's always nice to see the default getting some much needed improvements. To conclude, developers will also be able to more accurately profile their various applications to find bugs and optimize them with the enhanced system profiler. It comes with a redesigned user interface, integrates with GTK and Mutter, and now shows new data such as network usage, disk usage and energy consumption. And that's about it for the major changes to GNOME 3.34. If you're using Ubuntu or one of its derivatives, it should be the default in the next version, 19.10. If you're on a rolling release, you'll probably have just a few days to wait before 3.34 hits your desktop. This is a good version, more feature-packed than 3.32 was. Performance improvements are always nice, but this time there are some quality-of-life improvements as well, especially in the app grid. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of GNOME 3.34's new features and improvements. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you really did like the video, I also have a Patreon page where I publish the sources to all my videos. Check it out in the description. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!